I can hear my own voice. Maybe. You're, you're, you're turned on, Paul. <laughs> can you hear my voice? Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I kind of want to pinch myself this morning uh, to see if I'm dreaming. Uh, and I wasn't actually sure that today would work out. But it has. Uh, are you surprised? <laughs> I, I've been talking to a few people recently who, who said, oh, I'll see you in church on the 10th. And I wanted to say, okay, God willing and the creek don't rise. <laughs> the creek is trying to rise. <laughs> um, I want to say uh, thank you to the group we've called the reopening committee for arranging the protocols and the little all the things that we have to do, setting up chairs, making sure we would be as safe as possible. And I also want to acknowledge those who aren't here, um, perhaps because of space constraints or because they just still aren't ready to gather together in a group. We know that they are with us in spirit and they may be a part of this service online later on this week. And I just want to remind you because lots of things have changed in the time that we have not been able to meet face to face. Niverville United Church is meeting in person today and parts of our service will be shared and that going forward we will continue to share our worship even though we are gathering in our own separate church spaces. A couple of announcements. You may have seen the offering plate at the back. Again, out of caution, we are not passing the plate hand to hand because it would just be too cumbersome to sanitize in between each pass. Um, but it is there and uh, the, for those of you who would like to come next week, and apparently we still we have space, so please pre-register as you did this week. Again, Thursday at 6 p.m. is our deadline. Um, one of the changes that you may not know about, although some of you will have, is that our new office administrator is Stacy Keen Fraze. If you have any questions about anything going on, about schedules, about emails, about events, about who knows what, phone Stacy. She'd be glad to hear from you. She may not answer right away. She's in the office Tuesdays and Thursdays and some of Fridays, but she will get back to you and make sure that you're informed about everything that needs to happen. And finally, we are reaching out to the community. Uh, this coming Thursday, uh, next Wednesday, which is Food Bank. Is that correct? Wednesday, Wednesday Food Bank Day there will be a pop-up community vaccination clinic. So if you know anybody who has been waiting for vaccination or needs a second shot or, uh, you know, has, please let them know, 2 p.m. to 5.30, right here, there will be a pop-up vaccination clinic. We don't have the pig, we don't have, um, uh, are there announcements of milestones or special events? Right? I would just, I 
sort of misunderstood me at the beginning. I was like, man, I'm coming to this. I thought you said a black block vaccination. Or what? <laughs> <laughs> It's my mask. I'm not taking my mask off. No, that's why you, my, my hearing. Pop up. Pop up. Great. Okay. Well, there is one event. It's called Thanksgiving. It's tomorrow. Thanksgiving is tomorrow. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Also, I have two birthdays in our household. We have Trevor, who is turning 38, something like that. Yeah. And, and Annika is turning nine on the same day. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Well, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. You get a double, a double blessing, yeah. double surprise. Well, so I will turn it over to the uh, to the operators as we begin um, again part of our sharing. We gather once more at Steinbach and Riverville United Churches to create sacred space and worship together. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us. We are all of us treaty people, original inhabitants and those who came later, inheritors of a diverse history, dwellers in a common land travelers toward a better day. We have known friendship and animosity, cooperation and oppression, blessing and pain. And now, we embrace the sacred covenant that heralds a new beginning that softens the heart and dismantles the prisons of the present and the past. We joyfully claim our rights and responsibilities as treaty people. So as we gather, it doesn't matter who you are, where you have come from, who you love, or where you are on your faith journey. Know that you are a beloved child of God. You are welcome here. You belong. And as we light the Christ candle, symbolizing the presence of the sacred in our midst, we do, we do so in solidarity with all people and all creation.
open our spirits to embrace one another and all life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thanksgiving picture. What is Thanksgiving? Oh, good question. Thanksgiving is a holiday we celebrate every year in October. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. It's a day where we take time to be with friends and family and to give thanks for all that we have. What are you thankful for, Aubrey? I'm thankful for spending time with my friends and family. Oh, that's nice. It's so nice to finally be able to visit in our homes again. Remember how lonely it was when we couldn't see or hug people? Yeah. Yeah, what did you miss? I missed my grandma that lives far away and, and played eight. Oh, that must have been really hard for you. I'm sure your grandma was just waiting for the day she could hop on a plane to come see you. Last year was really tough, which makes this Thanksgiving extra special because we have a new outlook on what it means to be grateful and loved by others. It's not always easy being thankful, so this is good practice for us. But I really, I also miss Sunday schools. Oh, yeah. And play dates. They're super fun. Do you want to know what I'm thankful for? Yeah. What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for friends like you, <laughs> for having a fridge full of food, for having a family who loves me, and for being able to be back in school and don't have to learn online. Mm -hmm. That's a very good thinking, Adam. Yeah. So, what, now what? Should we get back to color? Sure. <laughs> hey, wait, this is your mic. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Let me sing with you. A Sunday, Sunday, 
so far you guys have done great. I'm the only one that's been confused by the back and forth. So, <laughs> Hugh McLennan, some of you will be familiar, is a Canadian writer from the mid 20th century. And he wrote, How long, O oh Lord, before we drop this puritanical notion that life is a problem to be solved and not an experience? To which we are introduced at birth. To which I might also add, is thanksgiving a time for passive gratitude for blessings that appear seemingly unbidden? Or is it also a time to gratefully celebrate the mysterious interplay between the investment of human energy and ingenuity and natural processes of which we are only vaguely aware. In all of life, we are both receiver and participant. Let's say responsibly, I think, a, a Thanksgiving litany. I, I, and I hope that's going to be in the screen. <laughs> ah. On this morning of Thanksgiving, our hearts leap with joy at the wonder with which the world was created. We delight in the gifts the earth provides. We rejoice that we can live, move, and work on such beauty. We give thanks that even in times we know as difficult, traumatic, life shattering, when we be lost, we remember. May we be inspired this day with the beauty of the world. Oops. <laughs> with the beauty of the world in which we live and love. That, oops. <laughs> we too, who often, we who too often forget to give thanks, might be stirred to living only in thanksgiving for all the passion that life shows to us. Turned into gifts to each other, to ourselves, to our world, as those born into light, yet ever seeking it. We pray, Amen. The reading from Joel is chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. Be not afraid, O land. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Be not afraid, O wild animals, for the open pastures are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their riches. The reading from Psalms is chapter 126, A Song of Ascents. When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. He who goes out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with him. Matthew 6, verses 25 to 33. So I tell you, don't worry about the food or drink you need to live or about the clothes you need for your body. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Look at the birds in the air. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. And you know that you are worth much more than the birds. 
You cannot add any time to your life by worrying about it. And why do you worry about clothes? Look at how the lilies in the field grow. They don't work or make clothes for themselves. But I tell you that even Solomon, with his riches, was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. God clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today, but tomorrow is thrown into the fire. So you can be even more sure that God will clothe you. Don't have so little faith. Don't worry and say, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? The people who don't know God keep trying to get these things. And your Father in Heaven knows you need them. The thing you should want most is God's Kingdom and doing what God wants. Then all of these other things you will need will be given to you. Thanksgiving Sunday, that we are able to begin the journey back to being an in-person church. It feels like a long time since our community has been able to gather face-to-face, -face, physical presence to share stories and laughter, and to pray together and to sing, albeit carefully. And we don't have it all together quite yet, but we're a big step closer. It hasn't been all bad this past 19 months. We've learned some new tools like Zooming and recording services and cross Canada worship tours. We've received the gift of vaccines, and we've worked hard to protect ourselves and one another from virus spread. 
and we have learned to be patient. Sometimes we have raged against the forces that made us learn to be patient, but we have learned. All these things, the patience, the zooming, the online recording, the care in protecting ourselves and one another from viral spread. All these things will be part of our life going forward. Yet how we longed for face-to-face -face contact. Just as you have longed for contact with children and grandchildren. And we come to this day grateful for so many things. Every agrarian culture celebrates a harvest festival at the end of the growing season. These festivals mark at least three things. Gratitude for the harvest and for its abundance. One way or another, the harvest is how we will feed ourselves going forward. The second is it's a time of rest after the long season tending fields and gardens. And third, and significantly, gathering with family and community to feast on and enjoy the bounty that has been received. Each of us experiences Thanksgiving just a little differently. I still remember in the Peace River area of Northern Alberta, Farmers were often still harvesting in the middle of October and couldn't stop for the celebratory feast. They were glad if they got their crop in before the snow. And yet they still knew Thanksgiving. In our day and age, many of us are urbanized. We don't follow the rhythms of the growing season quite as well and as much as our grandparents did. This year, some of us are feeling a little muted in our festivities, grateful for some newfound freedoms, the ability to renew cherished traditions like being at church, yet weary from 19 months of limits and conflict and worry and loss. And we are cautious hoping that the apparent decline in COVID cases nationwide means the pandemic will still will soon be behind us, and yet we're also unsure whether we can let down our guard. It's good to accept responsibility for the safety and well-being of our families and our community, and it's good also to do our part to promote the well-being of others. Yet the scriptures today remind us that there are forces at work far beneath the level of our conscious action. In the midst of drought and famine, Joel speaks to the land and the soil. Do not fear, O soil. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. In the presence of uncertainty, he speaks to the flocks and the herds. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green. The tree bears its fruit. The fig tree and vine give their full yield. And he speaks to the people. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for God has given the early rain for your vindication. God has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of rain, and the vats shall overflow with wine and with oil. It seems fortuitous that on this Thanksgiving we should wake up to rain. 
After having a summer that has been one of the driest that many of us can remember, just one more sign of hope and grace. Though appealing to the agricultural context, Joel's reference to the soil and the animals, and yes, even to the people, the behind-the-scenes processes of growing things might also be seen by us in other ways. How about the predisposition of our immune systems to fight off infection, especially when they are triggered by vaccine, vaccines which are made by copying the pathogen's own proteins? Have you ever wondered how that happens? It's an incredible natural mystery that some of the brightest among us have been able to harness as a source of freedom. It may also be seen in the human community's natural tendency to find resilience and courage in relation to a challenge. You've seen it. You've been it. You have guided it. Jesus' call in the sermon to avoid worry about the pursuit of security and material wealth might also be heard as a call to counter our normal human preoccupations, not, but also as a reminder that human beings are mysteriously and naturally wired to work together with courage and persistence to create the best outcomes for everyone. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, as we glimpse the possibilities of returning to a church life that looks a little more familiar, let's also remember that our world has changed. We have seen things that we need to do differently. There are many surprises yet waiting for us as we emerge into a new time of openness. Let us be grateful that we have been given insights and talents and energy to embrace that future with hope and with love. Grace and peace. Amen.
join me in prayer. Creator God, on this Thanksgiving, may we be filled with gratitude for all this life's adventure has brought us. May we be aware of the many who have needs. Guide us and let us be a community that seeks justice and security for others and peace in the world. Today we are grateful for vaccines. And we pray that vaccination will be rolled out continually, especially in the pure, poorest countries of the world. We ask your guidance as we empower our leaders to limit greenhouse gases so that we will not make this world worse for our children and grandchildren. Guide us in truth and reconciliation. That we might unite broken facets of our country and our community. And we pray for many other needs, including the needs of our own community. Let us name in silence those things which are on our hearts this day. These things we pray in Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth every shouts of joy and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands the trees of the fields will clap their hands the trees of the fields will clap their hands as we go out with joy we shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace Mountains and the hills will break forth before in every shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap, will clap their hands, and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands, the trees of the fields will clap their hands, the trees of the fields will clap their hands, the we go out with joy. Knowing that we are a people blessed beyond measure, that we are held in God's hand, that we have been given gifts in abundance to be shared. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you always. 
The peace of Christ be yours. Amen. Mountains and the hills will be born before you. There'll be shouts of joy.